All right, hi, welcome back. Attorney Steve Vondren here. Welcome to another exciting video. We are talking in this video about civility. Can you read that back here? Civility, okay. Every now and then this comes up in the practice of law. I've been practicing about 15 years now. And um, one of the things that happens, they call us civil litigators, right? So you have criminal defense attorneys. They defend people accused of crimes. And then you have civil attorneys so-called civil attorneys, and we're supposed to be civil, sometimes you have a duty of advocacy, however, that clashes with that. And sometimes in fighting for your client, you may be tempted or you may cross or tiptoe across the line every now and then, but you have to be careful because there are rules on civility. They are guidelines. These are not actual rules, but I'm taking you today to the California State Bar of California website. Um, this is general legal information only, not legal advice. But this is important every now and then when you're litigating a case or not even litigating. Sometimes it's pre-litigation. You're just working with opposing counsel or another party. Um, you have certain attorney civility and professionalism rules. Now, attorneys are all bound by the, the rules of professional conduct, as we call it. So there's certain conduct that every attorney has to uh, adhere to, but, um, and I'm not going to go over those. You learn those in law school. If you go to law school, you take a course on professional responsibility. Um, it, a lot of detailed rules. Listen, if you're going to get into the practice of law, you've got to love rules because there's rules for everything. There's guidelines for everything. Okay. So you have your, you have your rules of professional conduct, but attorney civility, sometimes this will come up and you'll say, do I have any obligations here to the profession, to my opposing counsel? If so, what? Um, and sometimes you need to caution or remind counsel or your opposing parties, maybe you're crossing the line, okay? Maybe you need to tone it down, tone down the rhetoric, as they say. So let's take a look. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to spend too much of your time here, but this is a State Bar of California website. Very helpful website. We're an attorney. All attorneys are members of a State Bar, Okay. And in addition, if you come down here a little bit, you will see different county bar associations, Marin County, Los Angeles County, Riverside, okay, Orange County. Um, so there's all sorts of different, um, uh, basically, bars, county bar associations at the bar at the county level, and they're going to adopt their own little versions of rules. So if you're if you're a member of the county LA County Bar Association or the Marin County Bar Association, check out these rules. They're really more of guidelines than they are rules, but I want you just to be familiar with these. And again, sometimes you need to, to um, point these out to other attorneys. So I'm going to just talk here. Um, I'm going to go to the Orange County Bar. Why? I found a really short one here. I like short things. This is only two pages. You guys can stomach through that, right? Two pages. But base, the basic... Uh, principle here is, you know, the system, life works better. Let's take it from the top. Life works better. The legal system works better. It's better for parties. It's better for the system. It's better for new lawyers that decide maybe I want to go to law school. It works in everybody's best interest when things are done civilly with civility. Okay. So these are the guidelines that you're looking at. You can see right here, it's guidelines. Now, what may happen if you violate the guidelines? You know, maybe somebody would report you, maybe the, the uh, county bar would say, you're out of here. We don't want people like you in our thing. Um, but let's just take a look at this. Okay. And I'm going to make some points here as we go. The practice of law is a noble time honored profession requiring and inspiring trust and confidence. Lawyers rightly take pride in seeking mutual cooperation and maintaining personal dignity. Um, lawyers practicing in Orange County share a commitment to civility and recognize their obligation to be professional with clients, other parties, and counsel, the courts, and the public. So that's five different things that you need to be thinking about when you're lawyering or if you're representing yourself in pro per and you're dealing with an attorney, sometimes what happens, you're in pro per and the other attorney, he's, uh, he's the Rambo litigator. He's got, he's the pit bull. Uh, you go to their website and it says pit bull for hire. We're aggressive. We're, you know, we're, you know, we're going to fight them to every last minute. You know, that's fine. That's fine. But 
realize that there are certain obligations, professional obligations, civility guidelines that should be considered, okay? Courts expect lawyers to show others respect. Okay, this is especially big when you're in court. You know, you don't you don't run around like a maniac in court. The judge isn't going to let you in, in most courts. You're not going to you can't run around and um, you know just treat people disrespectfully. But sometimes attorneys will try to do this you know, on their own in private when they're exchanging emails or phone calls. They will get aggressive and abusive. Sometimes it's pursuant to your duty of advocacy. You're trying to advocate. You're trying to do everything possible for your client. And that, in fact, is one of your obligations under the professional rules of conduct. But there is a point where you need to consider these other elements, okay? Lawyers are officers of the court. That's why we can't go into the court and lie to the court. We have a duty of candor to the court. We must um, disclose negative case law. Did you know this? This is something I'll bring up a few things um, from my professional obligations court that uh, course that may surprise you a little. You may say, what? Uh, say what, Willis? <laughs> but lawyers are officers of the court, okay? So we need to be candid with our positions. We need to be truthful and accurate. Now, what does candid mean? Candid is more than just being truthful if asked a question. Candid means you're forthcoming and you're saying, let me, let me share these things with you, Your Honor. For example, yes, there is negative case law. There is the New York Times versus Sullivan standard, Your Honor, and that may cut against my client's argument, but here's what's important. So you have these duties to the court, okay? Don't perpetrate a fraud on the court, okay? Don't um, attack your opponent in court papers, okay? What we call ad hominem attacks, okay? Attacking them personally and not hitting on the merits of the case, okay? Each lawyer's conduct should reflect well on the judicial system, the profession, and the fair administration of justice. After all, that's what we're going for. Um, sometimes as a lawyer, you don't have the best case, you don't have the best facts to work with, but you want to represent people to get them through this process with the best possible results. But maintaining the dignity and the integrity of the profession, as we call it, okay? Judicial resources are limited and wisely conserved when lawyers avoid frivolous disputes. In fact, if you file frivolous claims, uh, like in federal court, for example, we've appeared in over 150 or so cases, um, there's Rule 11. You could be sanctioned. You know, you can't just file frivolous lawsuits, okay? Um, lawyers should inspire public regard for the profession and the judicial system, okay? And this is one of the things I do. Um, in, in, for example, to th this would be a duty to the public and profession. Mentoring others, doing pro bono work, okay? Things that bode well on the profession, okay? The one way I try to do it is I try to do a lot of videos, I try to help people, not with legal advice, but free information in the form of all the videos that we've put up over the years. We've tried to take you from soup to nuts to give you all the information. That's part of my obligation, is showing people that it is a good profession. Does it have flaws? Yes, it has flaws, but it is the best system, in my opinion, on earth, okay? Um, so we want to inspire that um, respect, okay? Rudeness, distrust, or abusive tactics by lawyers do not reflect well in the legal profession, nor do they inspire the, pu uh, the public's confidence, okay? So again, it's that pit bull attorney, I'm the attack dog, okay? Um, you know, not so good. And, and these guidelines, by the way, these are something that you can ask your opposing counsel to agree to in advance. Many times you don't need to, believe me. Many, many lawyers are very, very fine lawyers. Every now and then you're going to run into somebody that's going to just drive you nuts. They're going to be trying to tear up, uh, tear up the legal system like it's a pit bull eating a steak. That's why they call, the, call it pit bull attorneys, okay? So what you may want to do is advise your clients up front, I'm not the pit bull attorney. I have certain obligations to my clients, to the profession, to opposing counsel. I can't just go disagree with everything. In fact, I will tell people, if you're looking for the pit bull, you should probably look elsewhere because I'm not going to be the pit bull. I think there's a difference between being a pit bull and being tenacious and, and honoring your duty of advocacy. But don't just come in like a bull in a china shop and just break everything up and 
lie to the court, you know, just disrespect opposing counsel, be abusive in depositions. This is another one. You get the attorneys in and they start objecting. And I had one guy, oh my God, I had one guy, he would just object to everything, object to everything. And like, no matter what I said, it didn't matter. And then not only did he object, but he started uh, these big, long-winded speaking objections that were just designed to, they were designed to take up time. Um, it, was, it was so disrespectful to the process. It wasted time. And so eventually I had to tell him, look, everything that you're doing is, I'm going to cons call this the blustering objection, okay, the blustering objection. And at the end of the deposition, I'm going to go and look at all the time that you wasted with these frivolous abusive, you know, attack dog on every single question, whether there's a reason or not, usually not, okay, because discovery is very liberal. And I said, I'm gonna call it the blustering objection and I'm gonna go to court and you're gonna, your client's gonna come back for all the time you wasted, okay? And, it's, and I've got it all here. And usually I'll do videotape depositions, okay? So you can see the abuse on camera, okay? Anyway, those are not the types of things that you want to do. Frivolous objections. There's an old saying in depositions, don't do anything that you wouldn't do in front of the judge. Okay? Don't do anything that you wouldn't do in front of the judge. Um, one of my good friends, Daryl, told me, never write a letter that you wouldn't want other people to see. Okay? So, but again, sometimes in the spirit of advocacy, people are fighting. They're passionate. There could be a lot of money at stake. There could be reputations at stake. There could be the, a business at stake, what we call the bet the farm case. So be thinking about these things. So as civil litigators, this is what we're thinking about. So here we kind of touch on that a little bit. We're on page one. I'm going to get to page two. We're almost there. Stay with me. There's good stuff here. Civility allows for zealous representation, reduces the client's costs, better advances the client's interests, reduces stress. This is big in our legal profession um, with a lot of, uh, you know, it's one of the highest professions for drug and alcohol abuse, according to my uh, CLE tapes and things. It increases professional satisfaction and promotes effective conflict resolution. Okay, that's really what it's all about. Problems are going to happen in life. People are going to have their problems, but you want to get them resolved fairly, honestly, the best you can for your client, okay? Um, these guidelines, guidelines foster the civility and professionalism that are the hallmarks of the best tradition, traditions of the legal profession, which we love, which I love. Anyway, I don't know if you guys love it. I love it, okay? Um, all OCBR members, Orange County Bar Association members, where, where, where am I going? <laughs> Are, are to encourage to adopt these guidelines as their personal standards. Again, this is why I'm going back over this. It's good to think about these things from time to time. Sometimes you get two, five years into your profession, you don't think about these until you have a heated conversation with another attorney. And then it's time to go, let's reflect on the duties here. Um, the guidelines exceed the rules of professional conduct, do not replace any statute or rule, and are not in intended as an independent basis for sanctions, discipline, or more litigation. Rather, the guidelines remind us that law is best practiced with civility and that clients, the courts, the public, and the fair administration of justice are best served. Now, let's look at some of the guidelines, okay? You heard all the mumbo-jumbo. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Um, counsel shall so show civility to other counsel and to self-represented litigants. This is, you now we run into this where the, uh, the piracy lawyer, right? The well, piracy lawyer will call up someone and say, uh, you know, I want to, you, you showed the boxing match without a license and I want you to pay $20,000. You say, whoa, whoa, oh geez, what's going on here? The unrepresented litigant. And they're telling you, you need to treat that person with civility. Calm down, Charlie. Calm down, Charlie. Okay. Um, that's one thing. Communicate in a professional, business-like manner. Respond to communications within a reasonable time, okay? So you're, you're always wanting to communicate. Realize one of the top, if not the top complaint with lawyers is actually communicating with them, letting them know where they stand, the, the significant key details of the case. Our firm, we try really hard to make sure that we're getting back to people within 24 hours. I mean, sometimes you have depots and trial prep and all this other stuff, but we try really hard because we know that that's important. It's very important, okay? Uh, provide accurate red lines. Uh, this is good, and that your most professional attorneys that you deal with, 
Um, what that means is if you have a settlement agreement, okay, so let's say we're working on a, a software audit settlement agreement, a software organization wants 25000 so we, we're negotiating the contract, we go back and forth on the terms, but if you change the terms of the contract, you don't just send it over to the other um, council and don't point anything out. You say, you redline it, Microsoft Word, you redline it, maybe I'll show you if there's any interest in how you do that. Um, let me know, post comments below, but you want to provide, the, you want to show what your red lines are, what your edits are. So there's no game playing, okay? So, you, you know, that's civility, that's professionalism. Avoid personal attacks, demeaning comments, you know, talking about things other than the merits of the case, and misleading characterizations of the other side's positions. Now, this is always a point of contention. I didn't say that. That's not what I mean. You're drawing unreasonable inferences. So that those kinds of battles are going to go on. Just bear it in mind, both in private communications and in court. Act civilly toward opposing counsel staff members. This is another big one. So my wife, uh, most people know, my wife helps in my, in my law office. We're a family law office. And she will answer the phone and some other attorney will just treat her like trash, like she's just nothing. And, you know, I don't get all bent out of shape and go, I'm going to go kill that guy. He's, you know, but it's so unprofessional. It doesn't get anybody anywhere. You know, things work best when you have a good civil working relationship regardless. Okay. That's just so. Um, next one. This is important. Extend professional courtesies. Agree to reasonable requests, those that will not prejudice or injure or harm your clients, of course, including those regarding service of papers or extensions of time. Okay, somebody says, well, you know, can we extend the deposition out um, three weeks because, um, you know, I'm having an operation? No, I'm not. No, absolutely not. No, you know, that's not going to get anywhere because you may be on the receiving end of that next time. You may need the extension. So it doesn't help you. It doesn't help your clients. This is what we're talking about, civility, okay? Um, motions. If you're going to file a motion, I mean, you can check your local rules. Everybody's going to have different local rules in state court or federal court. But I like the meet and confer. And a lot of, lot of um, courts impose that obligation. Meet and confer. Um, sometimes in person, they say, hey, let's meet and confer in person because, you know, you might do things in an email she would never do to another attorney, let's say, another attorney's face. So they encourage you many times to meet in person, but sometimes it's not practical. You're in San Francisco, they're in LA or, you know, San Diego, whatever the case may be, and it's not practical, so you can't do it, Okay in those cases, but meet and confer, talk about your points and authorities. They're going to come out in court anyway. Judge is going to ask you, what's the law? What's the law counsel? What's the law counsel? You might as well meet and confer, get it out there. If there's no reason to file a motion, don't file a motion. Okay. You don't waste the court's time with these tedious little things that you can just work out by yourselves by being professional, looking at the law. Okay. Looking at the law. What is the law? Be honest about it. Okay. Um, and if you don't, the law's not on your side, maybe you have a bad case. <laughs> it happens. It happens, okay? Um, what else? Privilege documents. Here's another one. Um, so say sometimes somebody sends you um, discovery. Okay, so discovery is the process of gaining information in a case. And somebody will send you a document that you know it's, it's a conversation email with their client. You go, oh my God, that's attorney-client privileged. So you don't want to be the... Uh, in, this is the rule. And some people go, that's not a good rule. But if you know something is privileged, okay, attorney-client privilege, you should notify the other counsel and not read it, not look at it, okay? Uh, I mean, sometimes it's hard to unring the bell, but I mean, the obligation is to preserve that attorney-client privilege and let the other side know. I know that's going to blow some of you away. You go, what? Law is warfare. This is Sin Tzu, the art of war, you know, and, and I hear you, but just I'm giving you some things here, okay? Um, sanctions, here's another one, constantly badgering your opponent, telling him, I'm sanctions, I'm going to seek sanctions, sanctions against you and your client, and for not doing this and not doing that. Listen, guys and gals, the courts don't really like to award sanctions against the parties, okay? So it's not going to happen very often. I'm not saying never, 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 but come on, there's real. I mean, I can count on one hand the times that maybe I recovered a sanction award. 
Um, so use that sparingly. I don't think judges like it. I've never clerked for a judge, but I don't think judges like it. Um, and so forth. So let's go on. You, again, you don't want to prejudice your clients because you do have that duty to your client. Um, showing up in court, you want to be on time. You want to be prompt. If you're not there, you want to call the court and say, I'm running late. I'm running late. I'm on the calendar, but I'm running late. Have some respect. Um, honor your commitments. Okay. Uh, let's see. We're there. We made it to page two. We're almost done here. Look, it's not too much. Hang tight. We're almost there. Good stuff here, right? Uh, advise your clients about the need for civility. And, and I really don't have this problem because I don't take clients that want the, 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 uh, the Rambo, you know, coming in court with his bandana on and his sleeve torn into pieces, you know, we'll just, uh, okay, maybe I have the ripping chest, but you know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm joking. So advise your clients about this if you're an attorney. Just say, hey, we got to play by the rules. We got to play fair, okay? And there's reasons for that. Assure your clients you will zealously represent them while still treating others with civility, okay? So in other words, they got to know, I'm not going to go into court and just start yelling and screaming like something you may see in a TV movie. I object, yeah, yeah, you know, you're nothing, you're worthless. You know, that's not going to happen, okay? It, it's not going to happen. Um, show, show civility during discovery. This is why I like this one, okay? So discovery is the process. So like sandbagging, this is like the big firms will do this. No offense. You know who you are, you Fortune 500 companies. And I've fought against them many times. They will sandbag you. They will object to everything with no grounds, okay? This happens a lot. And you just go, what are you doing? You're going to have to answer this question at one point or another, okay? If we have to file a motion to compel, we're going to have to do that. But they just put you through this process, sometimes just to run you out of money, okay? But sandbagging the document dumps. Um, document dump is when you put 100 boxes and you ship them out and you say, here's all your documents. Go through it. Have fun. Good luck. That's a, you know, these things are abusive discovery tactics. Let's take, let's take a look here. Work together to make discovery self-executing. The courts are going to want you to do this anyway, okay? Meet and confer. Here it is again. In good faith to try to limit and expedite discovery. Have agreements between counsel what we're going to do to get the evidence out, okay? It's coming out anyway. Let's be honest. Um, and to resolve disputes without motions. That's what I just got done talking about. Cooperate to make discovery reasonably convenient. Example, provide written discovery requests in electronic format. Discuss search terms for electronic discovery. Produce written responses and responsive documents in a user-friendly manner. Again, not the spreadsheet that's all so, so, it's so con crazy that a, a, a top student from MIT wouldn't even know what you're talking about, okay? Um, avoid, what else do we have? Avoid pursuing discovery only to harass adversaries or increase litigation costs, like taking depot after depot after depot after depot after depot when you know they probably don't have anything, okay? Respond forthrightly and timely to non-objectionable requests. Um, schedule depositions reasonably. Respond to inquiries for dates within a reasonable time and on reasonable terms. Depots are one of the best discovery tools. To me, it's the best by far. You get a video you get a video depot. Yes, it's going to cost you more, but uh, the truth tends to come out a little bit better on video, as I've seen. And, of course, I like video. Um, but be, be flexible in your scheduling. It's not going to do you any good to fight, 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 fight. Okay, I'm going to go into that. I've got a video on Attorney Steve deposition tips. Check that out. You don't want to miss that if you have a deposition coming up. Behave professionally at depositions is what I just got done saying. Avoid abusive, rude behavior, mischaracterizations of conducts, baseless instructions not to answer. Oh, instruct him not to answer. You know you're going to have to answer unless it's a privilege deal. So, so don't try to grandstand, do all that stuff that's just going to waste time and, you know. Anyway, make reasonable use of the allotted time without needlessly running out the clock or requiring an additional day. This is... Anyway, this, you need to see my uh, video on deposition tips. We're almost done right here. Last one. Show civility to the courts. Uh, integrity, duty of candor, uh, all these things. Respect the court's time. This is the important one. The, the, 
The judge is like the referee in a game. You never want to just go up and start tugging on the referee's shirt or kicking his hat off. You're gonna, it's not going to get you anywhere. So make good faith efforts to avoid or narrow issues before raising them with the court. Me personally, I don't like to waste, waste the court's time unless it's to educate them on the merits of my case. And I don't want to just go on rambling, rambling and this kind of thing. So make sure your witnesses are all lined up on time. Um, communicate respectfully with the court. All these are pretty obvious. Conduct yourself professionally in court. We know that. Show this to all. Okay, you got it, folks. There you have it. Those are the general civility guidelines. Is this everything? No. Um, you know, another one, for example, is if you're going to take somebody's default, they haven't answered, and you know they have an attorney, reach out to the attorney and say, hey, I'm going to take your default if I don't get an answer here, okay? Little things like that. So this is not an exclusive list. This is not everything. Can you believe there's more? Can you believe there's more? Yes, there's rules, 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 rules. And you have to love rules to practice law, as I do. But there's a general idea for you. If you're fighting opposing counsel, if you need help in civil litigation, particularly in the area of intellectual property, you know where to find us on the web at attorneysteve.com. And I hope this has fulfilled my duty to bring the public great information, things that can help and, and promote a fair, speedy resolution of disputes. Disputes arise. It's how we handle them that matters. Okay. Thank you for watching so much. Attorneysteve.com, the first name in legal services. I got to run. Dinner's on the table. We'll chat again. If you like this, give me a bump. Come on. Ain't going to kill you. Just, oh, hit that like button. Helps me out. Keeps these great videos coming your way. Have a great day. I really got to go. Bye. <laughs>